So this um, video on glucose homeostasis is going to look at the structure of the pancreas because the pancreas is vitally involved in glucose regulation. We're also going to break down the um, homeostatic cycle and look at what the receptors are, what the control center is and what are the effectors. The receptors, the control center, and the effectors in glucose homeostasis is a little bit more confusing than we've been looking at previously, and there is a lot more overlap between them. However, the stimulus is kind of easy to tell. So um, in this case, the stimulus for glucose regulation is going to be the glucose levels in the blood. So that's, that's a very easy stimulus to be able to detect. Um, and obviously, this is going to change... Um, immediately following a meal when you have taken in food and also um, after periods of fasting where your body is using up stored glucose and also exercise where your muscles are using glucose at a higher rate and therefore you are depleting your glucose stores. The main receptor um, for glucose regulation is actually inside the pancreas. Um, they are in this, this very interestingly called structure of the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans. We're going to look at the structure of the pancreas in just a second. Um, but it's a name that you will always remember because it's very distinctive. No doubt named after Mr. Langerhans because they're always male. So maybe that should be one of your life goals is to leave school go to university, discover some kind of obscure structure and have it named after you and have people assume that you were a male. Anyway, moving on. Um, so main receptor, islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. However, it is important to note too that there are also insulin receptors in the liver. They also act as a receptor, but they, um, they are less significant and we'll look at that shortly as well. Control center um, is the part that is going to make sure the glucose blood levels are maintained at a pretty regular set point. They're only actually only allowed to deviate by about 20%, so that's not very big. There are two types of cells that act as a control center. These are called alpha cells and beta cells. They are both within the islets of Langerhans. So let's look at the structure now so that we can make more sense of these two ideas. Okay, so this diagram is highly complex and slightly confusing, but the reason I chose it is that it has a big picture idea, so you get to, um, to see where the pancreas is in our bodies in relation to a structure that you kind of already know, which is the stomach, so we'll go over that in a second. Um, it gives you a slightly more close-up version here, and then finally we're going to look at the cellular structure of it, okay? There are a huge number of names here that you have I, and to be honest, I have never heard of before. You certainly do not need to know them. I will tell you the ones that you do need to become familiar with. Um, please don't get bogged down on this diagram. Please don't try and learn all these names that are completely irrelevant to the information we need to be taking away. Okay, so first up, um, pancreas in our bodies is um, a reasonably well-structured um, organ. It lies just underneath the stomach. It is located directly next to the duodenum, okay? Now, some of this year 11 stuff might be vaguely coming back to you when you remember that some digestive enzymes are produced in the pancreas and they flow through this pancreatic duct directly down into the duodenum, okay? So this is obviously a very important role of the pancreas, but we're also going to look at a second, secondary separate role that the pancreas plays, okay? So here's the pancreas here. You can see that there is a duct system running through it, and that's obviously quite important because it has to be able to empty all of those enzymes that it is secreting into the duodenum. If you look down at um, this diagram here, which is kind of like an, a blown up version of what you can see up here, um, these little groups of cells, they're actually called acena cells, um, and these are the cells that generate these enzymes each of these group of cells is linked through a ducted system and that takes those enzymes that these cells are producing into the duodenum. Okay, So that is, that is a, a big function of the pancreas is to make enzymatic digestive juices. However, there is a secondary separate function. You can see here that there is a, um, a group of cells here that is a different color to what the acena cells are. And there are no ducts running through this part here, okay? So this little, um, what looks like an island in the middle of the rest of the pancreas, in fact, that's why it is called this an islet, a little island, 
This is called the Islet of Langerhans. And within this, this Islet of Langerhans, there are three different type of cells. You can see them named down here, alpha, beta, and delta cells. Okay, um, Delta cells secrete um, a type of hormone that we're not very interested in at the moment, although it is very important. But you can subsequently forget about delta cells. We are going to focus on the function of alpha cells and beta cells. Another view of um, an islet of Langerhans. So here we show um, this part here is the islet of Langerhans, and you can see these um, acena cells around it, um, which are the digestive juice cells. Um, so down here, um, this diagram is showing you that beta cells are these light blue cells here. Now obviously they're not that color in real life, but they're just showing them to you as a representative color. They do actually look different colors under a microscope when you stain them with a particular stain. Um, and that's actually how we can tell them apart, how they looked like an island in the first place. And alpha cells, okay, which are a dark blue color here. So these two cells, alpha cells and beta cells, within the islet of Langerhans, um, are the two most important cells in terms of regulating and releasing hormones that are responsible for either increasing blood glucose or decreasing blood glucose. And we're going to go and look at them now. Okay, so um, within the islet of Langerhans, which is another version here that you can see, um, generally th there are two different ways of regulating blood glucose. So we've talked about the alpha cells and the beta cells. But these cells independently secrete two different hormones which have completely opposite or antagonistic actions on blood glucose levels, okay? So these two hormones are called insulin and glucagon. Now insulin you have probably heard of before. I'd be surprised if you had not heard of insulin, mostly because people that are suffering from diabetes um, we'll talk about this shortly but um, in the next couple of videos, but generally they tend to be either lacking in insulin or insulin doesn't work properly in their bodies. Um, we don't tend to talk about glucagon so much, but we're going to learn about it now. And basically these hormones um, act against each other. They have opposite effects to each other. So these two hormones um, are only produced within the islets of Langerhans. And um, as we said, there's there's a few different types of cells, but we're only thinking about alpha and beta cells. So alpha cells release glucagon, and they're going to do that when blood glucose is very low. Okay, so glucagon is the hormone that is released in response to low blood glucose. The beta cells release insulin in response to high blood glucose, or when glucose rises above 5 millimolar in the blood. We can consider the alpha and the beta cells to actually be the control center um, in this part of the loop. And you may have noticed that I am yet to mention the word hypothalamus, and that is because the hypothalamus is not involved in glucose regulation. So it is quite different from the other um, homeostatic mechanisms or systems that we've been looking at. And it is these alpha and the beta cells within the pancreas that are actually the control center. So you may be noticing that we've already got a bit of overlap between the receptors and the control center. So receptors were the alpha and beta cells, and now the control center is the alpha and the beta cells as well. And the effect is, yep, you guessed it, alpha and beta cells are involved as well, okay? But rather than being the cells themselves, um, the effectors are more to do with the hormones that are being released. And the effector will also be the final end point that these hormones bring about. So that's going to be looking at the liver. So let's just break up and, and unpack this slide a little bit. So um, we've said that insulin is secreted by beta cells. So that means that the insulin, the hormone, will be the effector. And the opposite to that, the glucagon is secreted by alpha cells, and so that will be the alternative effector, okay, depending on whether the blood glucose is increasing or decreasing. The liver has insulin receptors, and so that means that the liver is also going to be part of the effector because it can respond to insulin circulating or even glucagon circulating within the bloodstream. And um, that means that the liver is an effector because it um, can convert glucose to glycogen if we need to store glucose, or alternatively, it can convert 
glycogen back to glucose and therefore allow the release of glucose. And so um, that means that we can bump up the levels of glucose in the blood. So this is a diagram that um, is taken from your notes. And in your notes, um, you're asked to go through and, and um, label this diagram with, with the events that is happening. But let's quickly just talk through it now. And we'll talk about um, basically how the blood sugar is changing or how the blood glucose is changing, but also which hormones are going to kick in and cause what effect. Okay. So right at the beginning, this is where you're eating a meal. So following your meal, your blood glucose will increase and rise up. Um, obviously because you are digesting the um, carbohydrates or you're taking in the sugars that were in your food and your body is converting that, breaking it down into glucose and the glucose is being released into your bloodstream. Okay, So as that happens, your body is going to um, detect that you now have rising blood sugar levels. Insulin, which is released by the beta cells, will be kicked off into action and insulin brings about the uptake of glucose by, by different cells. And in the next video, or in fact in a couple of videos, we'll talk about how that actually happens. So insulin brings about um, uptake of glucose, and also in the liver it allows glucose to be converted to glycogen where it can be stored. And so as the glucose is being um, used up or taken away by the cells, that is when it starts falling back down to the set point level, okay? So the decrease back down here in glucose is because insulin is telling your body to take it up. It is telling your liver to store it in, in the form of glycogen. As it drops down below the set point, um, the production of insulin is stopped and instead the production of glucagon is kicked off. And glucagon is produced by the alpha cells within the islets of Langerhan. So glucagon acts upon the liver and it tells the liver to convert that glycogen back into glucose which can then be released into the bloodstream and so that is what is happening here um, we drop down to this low point but then the glucose is now being released back from the liver back into the bloodstream and so it'll rise up again and you can actually get this kind of sigmoidal this wavy kind of curve as we go insulin acting glucagon acting insulin acting glucagon acting and hopefully um, the, the variance would become quite low, quite close to the line, but immediately following a meal, you tend to get very big fluctuations in the blood sugar levels. Just a tiny bit more about um, insulin and glucagon. So we've said here um, that the pancreas, these alpha and beta cells, um, produce insulin and glucagon. Um, note they've mentioned endocrine gland here. So that's what we're talking about. This, these islets of Langerhans are part of the endocrine system because they produce hormones. Um, as I said, these hormones act antagonistically against each other. They act in opposite directions. Um, insulin receptors are found in muscle, liver, and fat. And um, we're going to talk about how the muscle um, deals with glucose in a couple of videos. Um, and glucagon receptors are mainly in the liver. The reason for this is because the liver is the place where glucose is stored as glycogen, and so there's not really much point in glucagon acting on other tissues that do not have the ability to release glucose back into the bloodstream. Okay, um, But basically the blood glucose is regulated by these two hormones um, so that it becomes a very narrow range and that's so important in order to keep our brain working properly. So just a summary down for both of the hormones here. Um, insulin is promoting a decrease in blood glucose by making our body uptake glucose and also um, hold it in the form of glycogen in the liver. And then in the opposite case, gly uh, glucagon here is promoting an increase in blood glucose because it, it, it makes the liver break glycogen down and release it in the form of glucose. Right, another little quiz. Um, so like the other ones, we'll quickly go through the questions. I'll get you guys to pause the video and write your answers down, and then we'll go through the answers, okay? Um, so just asking you to, to summarize up and find out what is the stimulus, the receptors, the control center, the effectors, and a last question on what else is the pancreas actually do. So pause the video now and write down your answers, and then we will run through them together. Okay, so the stimulus is the changing blood glucose levels. 
Um, and as we've already said, it's very highly regulated between 4 and 7 millimolar in the blood. The receptors, the main receptor is the pancreatic receptors, which are the alpha and beta cells in the islets of Langerhans. Um, it's also important to remember that there are insulin receptors in the liver, which can be categorized as receptors also in the system. Control center, um, islets of Langerhans, in particular the alpha and the beta cells in the pancreas. Effectors, also the pancreas and the liver, but now we're talking about the action of the, the two hormones, insulin and glucagon. And this brings about conversion of glucose to glycogen or vice versa, depending on what we want to do. Do we want to increase glucose in the blood? Do we want to decrease glucose in the blood? And finally, um, the pancreas is also involved in um, secreting digestive enzymes into the duodenum so that it can um, break down those foods.